Saving seed is the backbone of gardening. However, many modern gardening books or TV shows neglect this most fundamental part of raising plants. I will show you how to collect and store your own seed in a nifty way and share with you a secret that will boost your seed saving powers. Up next. We take it as granted that we can start by opening a seed packet bought in a store. This wasn't true until the relatively recent Victorian period, when a newfound passion for gardening by a growing middle class fueled by industrial growth and mechanization created the ubiquitous mailed ordered seed catalog selling neatly packaged seeds in colorful envelopes. The Seed Packet while the cover image styles went through profound transformation since, the concept of a packet itself has not. This luxury hides the true cycle that must go on to ensure a species survive. The first rule in saving seed is to select the best specimens you have that show the most desirable traits to leave as seed stock. I had some beautiful strong zinnia growing in the midst of my tomato bed. I wanted to save their seeds to grow new ones similar to these for seasons to come. I remember reading as a child a book that told the story of a seed that wanted to live forever, that wanted to be perpetual. After restless search and failed attempt, it finally realized that to live on, it had to die as a seed and be buried on the ground for a new plant and seed to grow from it, to be perpetual. For some reason, this simple story stuck with me. Despite being raised in the concrete jungle of Sao Paulo and having very little contact with the plant world, this tale encapsulated an important truth in gardening. To save a plant for posterity, you must keep planting it. Saving seed is just a temporary lockdown to safeguard genetic material for some time, but old seeds lose viability. The easiest way to save good viable seed in the case of most flowers is to wait for the seed heads to completely dry and then harvest them. I returned weeks later when the flowers had gone from plump and colorful to old and muted to dried and brown. I harvested them, collecting the full seed head. In the case of zinnias and many flowers, you will have petals mixed in with chaff and seed. Zinnia is a composite flower. That means that while we may think of each bloom as one flower, they are actually a collection of many flowers, some more fertile than others. Many other flowers have similar structure, including sunflowers. While I could store these seeds together with the petals and chaff, it is always a good idea to winnow it to get pure seed left. It ultimately saves you space and storage. First, I crush everything using my hands to make winnowing easier. This forces the heavier and sturdier seed to separate from the more flimsy chaff and petals. It is a good idea to use gloves because doing this repeatedly can hurt your skin. Winnowing in a windy day is always a better choice. The idea is to throw seed from up high letting the lighter chaff fly away as the heavier seeds fall into a container. This is the simplest type of seed to save, the ones that dry naturally on their own and would just fall to the ground had it been left to its own devices. Most garden flowers are processed similarly. Other vegetables may have different seed structures and a different process will be needed. In general, a seed is what is considered a fruit botanically and before a seed develops, there must be a flower. In the case of radishes, what we could mistakenly call its fruit, the edible part, the red globe we eat, is anything but. It has nothing to do with plant reproduction. Although it is showy and colorful, the fruit of the radish is something quite different. If you harvest your radishes in time, you will never see its flower or fruit. In fact, most city people and young children may have no clue that radishes have flowers. A seasoned gardener knows far too well how quickly radishes can go to seed, what we call bolting. We try to avoid it at all costs, that is, unless we are intentionally trying to save seeds. After flowering, radish will start developing green pods that will contain a few seeds inside each. One thing many people may not know is that the tender pods are edible, as I showed in my previous video with the stir-fry recipe. They must be collected when tender and young though. A few days later and it becomes past its prime, increasing in pungency and becoming pithy and inedible. If you are saving seeds, you must wait for it to fully mature and dry on the plant. The most viable seeds will be harvested only when the seed pods are completely dried and brittle. They must dry on the plant. If the seed stalks are cut when still green and left to dry, they may not develop and mature fully. And while you may still get some viable seed from it, it is always recommended to allow it to mature naturally. While the flowering stage of radish actually looks pleasant and picturesque in the garden, 
and provides much needed nectar to pollinators. When the seed pods develop and start to dry, the plant may start looking gangly and unsightly. Unsightly to those who want to restrain nature and make it follow their preconceived notions of beauty and order. I think there is beauty in this stage too, much like there is beauty in an elder's wrinkled face. As for storing your radish seeds, you could save them in their pods and in a dry place and break them open as you need them when planting. If you want to winnow it out to save space, you will have to crush the seed pods, releasing the seeds. The seed pod will also be lighter and will rise to the surface and be carried by the wind. When crushing the seed pods, your hands work well, but it does take a toll on your skin. Crushing them with some type of tool may end up damaging the seeds themselves, so you do not want to do that. Coming up next, I will show you how to create your own nifty containers to store your seed efficiently and beautifully and also share with you the secret to storing them properly using a simple trick to ensure longer viability. Suburban Homestead is brought to you by viewers like you. Thank you. If you enjoyed the show and want to ensure more videos are produced, you can contribute on Patreon or buy art from my Etsy store. This week I'm featuring hand-painted garden plaques. You can have a piece of the suburban homestead in your home made out of recycled wood. Hurry, limited orders will be available. Now that you have your seeds separated and cleaned, you will need to store them in an efficient way. This nifty idea makes use of baby food jars. It is a great way of reusing those single-use containers. You will also need thick masking tape and round labels of different sizes to create details. If you know anyone with young babies, they will be more than happy to give you these jars. You will need to have the jars washed and dried with the labels removed. Get your clean jar and mask a rectangle on one side. Try to be as neat as possible in this step. Make sure the tape adheres well to the glass. The glass must be completely grease free. While you could technically save your seeds in paper bags or envelopes, saving them in glass looks neater but also has a secondary practical function. Glass jars will prevent moisture from entering in contact with the seed. Once you've finished masking the window, use round labels to create decorative corners on your masked rectangles. You can use bigger circles or smaller ones, or even rolls of small circles to create a stamp edge effect. There are two things that shorten the lifespan of seeds, moisture and warmth. You can also put these jars in a freezer if you are planning to store these seeds long term. Crops like carrot, parsnip, onions and leeks also have notorious short lifespans and may benefit from being stored this way if you plan to store them for more than a year. Once you have all your jars prepared, lay out newspaper under the jar and spray the masked windows using a chalkboard spray you can find in a hardware store. This will create a nice label look in your jars that you can write and rewrite on using chalk as you reuse this year after year. Spray them evenly without allowing the paint to drip. I personally do not like using spray paints, but in this case it must be sprayed to adhere well to the glass. Remember to paint the jar lids as well, because you can also use them to write on. Allow the jars to dry completely before peeling away the masking tape. Do not touch the painted part until fully cured. It is best to wait up to a week because paint on glass, if not fully cured, has a tendency to peel away easily. Before it cures, you can touch up any paint that may have run over the edge to get a neater result. Once the sprayed labels have fully cured, you can store your seeds in them and write down the name and date you collected them for future reference. You can use a chalk pencil to do this or even a small piece of chalk. Before closing the jars, it is a good idea to ensure that your seeds are completely dried. You should be able to snap bigger seed like squash. If you live in humid conditions, this might be a challenge. If you store seeds in jars that are not fully dried, they will get mold. Glass jars will keep outside moisture from getting to the seeds, but it will also prevent moisture inside from escaping. There is a simple trick to remedy this, and it might be the most important thing to remember from this video. This will ensure that you become a master seed saver and will prevent you from having rotten seed and broken dreams. In fact, I will go so far as to say, if you do not include this trick when saving seeds in glass jars, do not save them in jars. It is better to keep them in paper bags. The secret is to include a packet of silica inside each jar. 
a very cheap and reliable source of silica granules, is actually cat litter. Make sure it is of the translucent crystal type. Other types of cat litter do not work. These crystals are basically silica crystals. All you need to do is to make a little pouch with a paper coffee filter or folded up tissue paper with these crystals inside. Use a stapler to secure the packet and that's it. Put it inside the jar and now you can safely tighten the lids and store your seeds. You can use as much silica as you want. The more you use, the better it is. If you don't want to use cat litter, you can buy silica crystals online for flower drying. But it is basically the same product. In a future episode, I will discuss why saving your own seed is important. But now that you know how to save seeds correctly, you can start saving your own, contributing to the perpetual cycle of seed to flower to fruit to seed.